Today we are going to be trying this Ocal electronic collimator with mass my SCD Schmidt Cassegrain telescope here to see whether we can collimate, collimate this uh, telescope during the day or here during the night but without looking at the star because we are having terrible seeing as always here in Tokyo. Let's see how this works. Hey guys, Quint the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. So today we're look, going to look at this very interesting list load product which is the Ocal uh, electronic collimator uh, that has some very interesting videos on the internet that showed it basically being like an electronic Cheshire eyepiece, very precise, to collimate Newtonians, especially Newtonians that are difficult to collimate like the Sharp Star F2.8 uh, Newtonians and I guess things like Takahashi Epsilon series could be collimated with such a uh, camera. Now I don't have a Newtonian that I can collimate myself so instead I'll be using it on an SCT and uh, fortunately we do have a video about how to use that on an SCT so I checked that and uh, we'll see how it works. Uh, now this particular camera was not sent to me by the manufacturer of the camera it was sent to me by an astrophotography dealer slash shop based in the Middle East in Oman and uh, here is their website I'll put the link down in the description it's called uh, I believe astronomical solutions company and they wanted a bit of exposure which is completely understandable and you know when I see a small shop selling astrophoto astrophotography goods for the hobby in an area that likely doesn't have a lot of providers for the hobby like I feel for them and I really want to support them so when they contacted me they told me they would send me uh, this they didn't care whether I did a good or bad review of it because they're not the guys actually you know producing that uh, that product they, they do sell it as a dealer but uh, you know they uh, they sent me that to test uh, I will test it I will have fun with it and we're gonna see if it works but I just really want to mention that you know uh, if you're in the Middle East and the region you're looking for a shop to buy astrophotography goods this could be uh, a shop to look at now if we look at their page for the electronic collimator we can see uh, that we have two versions of it we have a normal standard version and a pro version as far as i understand it the pro version has the only advantage that it also has an android slash iphone app that you can then uh, connect the camera the electronic collimator to and do the collimation from there uh, unfortunately i do have the pro version but for me it didn't work on my pixel 6 which is running the latest android version that probably is the issue uh, the Skywatcher SynScan Pro app doesn't work either so yeah it's uh, I, I could have done with no, the non-pro version using the Windows software now what is the in the box we have a USB cable now the USB plug on the computer side and on the camera side they're the same so this is not your standard like Astro camera USB cable uh, so yeah just something to know about we have the actual camera which is uh, or the electronic collimator here that has a ser serial number written at the back and a nice uh, threaded cap uh, the threads here are M42 uh, it's basically T threads so they can be threaded in to telescopes that uh, have basically those threads uh, for us it also comes with a 1.25 inch um, nose piece and it comes with some weird adapter here that I thought was a two inch adapter, uh, two inch eyepiece kind of adapter. Doesn't seem to be the case. I don't know what it is. I couldn't find you know, what it actually does. But since I'm gonna be using it with the, this SCT and I've uh, set up a two inch adapter in there, I'm gonna use a T-thread to two inch adapter that I bought like 10 years ago from OPT and here I have it set on the camera. Now, what I found very interesting with this camera is that it comes with a serial number, and if you go on their website, you can download not only the software to use a camera, but you can also download an Excel file that has a list of serial numbers on the left-hand side, and then a series of numbers uh, that seem to be unique to each camera, have been measured for the camera, for the electronic collimator, and then you need to go inside the application and copy-paste those numbers inside this focus.txt file and I have no idea exactly what that does uh, but psychologically speaking it makes me feel better because I feel like my particular camera has been measured and we have numbers to make it work perfectly um, but then I have no uh, proof that it actually means anything okay let us now install the camera onto the telescope 
Okay, I just inserted it into the eyepiece adapter uh, at the back of the uh, telescope and uh, I am just going to launch the software and we're going to uh, turn on the camera and it's going to display uh, the camera. Now I can go inside the camera settings and I can play with things like contrast, brightness, the exposure time, all this kind of stuff. But as it is, it seems pretty good. It's just that uh, because it's an SCT, we have a long focal length. And so the secondary mirror appears to be very, very far away. We're going to use the scroll wheel to uh, zoom into here. And now we've zoomed uh, into the camera. I can also uh, use, I can change the focus of the camera itself. So I can uh, play with this. You can see, and that, that's pretty cool. I, I haven't really seen much of that. I think this is good enough. And um, yeah, we can see the camera itself is actually seen in the middle. This area here, this bright area is actually reflecting some stuff on the wall here. Uh, normally I would like angle the telescope up a bit more. If we were during the day, I would have it like just like oriented up so that the mirror is, the primary mirror is working against gravity. You want to make sure by the way that whenever you use an SCT, the last movement you do on the focusing knob at the back is counterclockwise so that you're pushing the mirror against gravity. Now that we can see here, so the, the bright area is the secondary mirror and we want to make sure that everything is centered basically and we can see that here everything is close to collimation. One thing as well is that from a particular schmidt cassegrain I actually uh, centered the uh, secondary mirror against the primary mirror. And uh, this is a manipulation that is not like normally user done, there are four grub screws on the side here you need to like loosen the screws of the retainer of of the uh, corrective plate at the front then you need to loosen all of the grub screws you need to kind of like manually pull the corrective place plate into the right direction uh, tighten the grub screws again it's a, it's a bit like of a process but i've done that so i know that my secondary is perfectly centered compared to the primary how much of an impact this has on the collimation procedure i do not know so that's a bit of an unknown. Anyway, let's uh, see. Can I enable the circle? Yes, I enable the circle. I'm going to reduce the radius. And you can see we have this green circle that appeared. I'm also going to enable a star. And this is where I'll be able to set up uh, first my center offset. And we can see like vertical offset. I can change that. And this will change basically the, the center of both uh, those lines. And I'm going to decrease the thickness because I want to see what I'm doing. Here we are. It seems that we are nicely uh, centered. Uh, then I will disable the star settings now that we are uh, nicely centered. By the way, the offset goes to plus minus 20 on each. If that's not enough, I found that after you close the app and reopen it, the offset is back to zero, but it still remembers where it was previously. So if you need to move the offset more than what is av available in the UI, do one first pass, close the software, reopen it and do a second pass and it should work. Now I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to hover over the slider here and use my mouse to um, change the size. So uh, the scroll wheel of my mouse to change the size of the circle so that we have it exactly around this circle uh, here. Now it feels like it's not quite centered, but I'm going to play with the offset to properly center this circle onto the uh, dark area that we have here. And here we are, this looks perfect. Now our mission is to center the secondary mirror reflection by playing with the collimation screws. So for that, I'm gonna enable another circle. I'm gonna put the size at maybe like 140. Oh yes, and that's, that's a good size. And we can see that I basically want to uh, move the uh, secondary mirror towards the red line towards the bottom right of the image. And if I place a hand here, I want to go there. So here is where I want to affect things to move the secondary mirror more towards the red line in the bottom right. And it so happens that I'm pointing directly to one of the collimation screws. Now I've done this test before and I was able to see that when I loosen a collimation screw, it moves 
the image towards the red line. So I'm going to loosen that screw and tighten the two other screws uh, for my collimation. And what's really cool about that is that I can do that while I'm looking at the image. Okay, and now you can see on the image that it seems my secondary is perfectly centered. Now the problem that I have is that I'm not being super precise because of the, uh, the texture of my wall. Really ideally I should be doing this during the day pointing to the stars, uh, sorry, to the sky, uh, but I was working and I couldn't take a video of that. So <laughs> well, I'm doing this at night. But you can see the principle of it is really nice. And I feel like there's a lot of potential with such a collimator. Now I am going to showcase a problem with the collimator is that for visual observation with a Schmidt Cassegrain, the collimation should always be done with the eyepiece or uh, whatever optical equipment you're gonna to use to observe the planet or whatever you want to, uh, to observe. This is because, especially if you're using non-threaded adapters like I am here, uh, just a two inch tube, basically, when you tighten the screws, it will slightly tilt your eyepiece. And you want to compensate for that tilt using the secondary uh, mirror tilt, as far as I understand it. I'm not an expert in this process. But that means that if I put in a star diagonal and then I put in the camera, I can guarantee you that I will uh, see it, see the result as if it were again miscollimated. Let's try that. Okay, and I, now I am through my um, diagonal, my star diagonal. So we have an additional mirror whose angle might not be exactly 45 degrees. It might be tilted a little bit. This particular star diagonal doesn't allow its primary mirror to be collimated. So there's that. And what we're seeing, I'm gonna remove the two circles here is that um, the primary, the secondary mirror is kind of like going too much towards the direction that we pushed it uh, towards. And the best thing would likely be to be um, uh, basically using the collimator with the star diagonal before you use an eyepiece because it's likely the eyepiece would have a similar amount of tilt depending on tolerances. So that's where I see this product for pure visual on a Schmidt Cassegrain or on a Newtonian as a great tool to get you very close to perfect collimation, but maybe not quite there because we're gonna have additional tilt introduced by the tolerances on the barrel of eyepieces. But I think it's great. And if you're like me in Tokyo or in an area with very poor seeing and you cannot do uh, star uh, collimation with the star in focus because that's ideally what you want to do and you want to look at the airy disks and make sure that the star is centered within the airy disk and you, you get an actual proper disk, uh, then this can be really a lifesaver and make me feel better about myself. I think it's even better in um, the case that you're going to do astrophotography and you have threadle, threaded adapters for astrophotography. So for instance, you're using one of Sharpstar's uh, Newtonians or you're using an Edge HD telescope where you have threaded uh, adapters and you can, uh, you can simply use that with the M42 threads or the T threads directly. And then you know that your collimator and your camera will have a very similar amounts of tilt and yeah, in, in that case, it's like collimation that you would obtain with this electronic collimator would definitely be more than good enough. And similar, I think for Raza or Hyperstar, it could be a great tool. I'm not gonna use it for Hyperstar for me because my Hyperstar is working beautifully. And currently on my Hyperstar, I have an APS-C size sensor. The stars are really good across the field. They get a bit elongated on all the four corners. This is because my camera is slightly too close to the Hyperstar uh, lens, but I don't care. I don't want to, like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I don't want to make it better uh, and risk making it worse. So I'm not gonna do that, but I hope this was interesting to you guys in terms of an alternative to like the, uh, uh, those super expensive SCT laser collimators. And also for Newtonians, there are those laser collimators, but laser collimators need to be collimated themselves. If they're, if they're not collimated, you get wrong collimation. It, it's, it's, 
like and, and you have the tilt issue as well uh, a workaround is to use a bar load laser that's a, a good technique but not so many people know about it apparently for Newtonians the best is a Cheshire eyepiece but if you have that things are going to get much simpler immediately and there are nice video tutorials uh, on YouTube to, to get to use that so I quite like that product I see that there are limitations with the product for me the pro version didn't work the uh, the Android app I mean uh, so I had to use Windows and uh, but otherwise this is pretty cool and uh, yeah I mean um, if I had a Newtonian that I needed to collimate myself I would definitely be using that the whole time now how good it is how good is the result well what I'm gonna do is I am going to collimate again uh, but using uh, like through the uh, diagonal and then we're gonna uh, I'm gonna point it to a random star and see if it uh, if it seems well collimated the, the collimation process is so fast though it's so easy when you can view the result in real time on the screen I, I absolutely love that that's like let's see what the the actual end result is okay and I just have like a star in the middle of my field of view is my usual um, eyepiece it's very slightly out of focus with counterclockwise uh, movement on the focus knob and it looks like a perfectly uh, round tiny donut um, I wouldn't be doing additional collimation on it um, in normal times so I feel like uh, the electronic collimator has worked um, how precise it is I don't know I don't have the seeing to be able to tell you so it's a bit of a of a gambit I guess uh, I've seen other people use this on cloudy nights it's cheaper than the super advanced uh, Hutec uh, laser collimator and uh, yeah maybe it can uh, it can really help you and with that that's pretty much all that I wanted to show uh, today um, it's, it's a very interesting product and I really want to thank um, Astronomical Solutions Company from Oman for sending me that uh, free of charge. It works great. I, it seems at least to me it works great. Uh, I, I can't say for sure. Psychologically it does help because <laughs> I feel like I have the, the telescope like perfectly collimated as I need it. Uh, but then like is it really? I would need something like an f2.8 Newtonian are uh, an epsilon from Takahashi to really test so I can't uh, go further into uh, the matter and you'll have to make your own opinion maybe maybe it is terrible I don't know but being able to do collimation of an SCT during the day without using artificial stars while pointing the mirror upwards against gravity like you would while you're doing normal observing and then you can actually see the results in real time while you are playing with your screwdriver on the collimation screws that's already really good and especially if you're like installing bobs knobs or something like that uh, then you can very easily during the day recollimate using such a tool uh, without like you know having to fear that you won't be able to get back to a, a decent a good enough baseline that's pretty much it for this video I hope you found it useful uh, if you liked what you saw feel free to go uh, you may want to consider going down below clicking that like button subscribing if you're new to the channel in which case welcome leave a comment with your thoughts on such a product whether you think it's gonna work or whether you think it's a terrible idea I am not completely sure I don't feel like I have the uh, the expertise to uh, say uh, whichever direction in the matter uh, as always, uh, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, whenever you can, to look up at the stars. And I'll see you next time.